And we get our man, Mr. Teddy Kingstad, up as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex dash trading dash on lock dot com. Teddy Cakes that what's going on? Well we have a kind of a quiet day in the uh, currencies now. They actually had some nice movement overnight. Uh, and I have a, a word for you guys. I don't know if you know what it is or not. I learned today. Do you know what the word pirogue means? Pirogue? Pirogue, yeah. I Boris don't... Johnson uh, issued a statement uh, he's going to uh, uh, about proroguing uh, Parliament. So pirogue means to uh, to uh, suspend uh, either a parliament or a legislative body um, for a, a period of time without dissolution. So as we move forward towards Brexit, um, after Boris's trip to Europe and the G7, he came out with uh, last night that, uh, yeah, he's going to shut down parliament to make Brexit happen on the 31st. I know. Pretty intense, man. Like, I have the chart up, Teddy, of the pound. And, you know... I mean, looking at this, this is like a rejection of lower price. It's like yes, yeah. Now, now you notice on the pound they had a higher move high yesterday. Yeah. This morning they tanked, and now they're kind of in the middle of the body of the session. Yes. So, I think that what we have is um, now we have a couple of things going on. On a fundamental technical basis for intraday traders, we have a new higher move high on an intermediate term and short term that was set yesterday. And then today with this slide, that was a pretty big range between yesterday's high and today's low. Yes. So I think those are the two key pivots. I think that the break that we had was an initial knee-jerk reaction to the news, not necessarily meaning any, anything about direction. Um, but I think that uh, because we have the end, one word, end of the week, end of the month, end of the summer, and we're starting out with uh, the last month of the quarter next week, and we have a holiday market. So what does that mean? I think that Boris put the line in the sand a couple weeks ago, and then he really put a stamp on it uh, last night saying that, yeah, Brexit's going to happen, like it or not. It's going to be hard, but we're going through it full throttle. It's going to be wild watching this thing shake out, man. I think all of us, Tommy and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, like, okay, you know, Austin the Queen, okay, let's, let's have a Queen's speech, suspend this deal. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and the, the key behind that, folks, is that the Parliament won't have as much time to, to basically go after Johnson, right? That's, that's kind right. of how this shakes out, right? That's exactly what it means. So, and I think that right now you have... Uh, some key numbers that are coming out. So I think the next couple of days are going to be pretty much quiet. Maybe some uh, a little knee-jerk reactions. For the U.S. dollar, um, we have uh, GDP, and we also have the GDP for Canada coming out over the next couple of days. So the Canada looked like it was starting to run out of gas, and then now it looks like it's got a little spark with some bullish uh, momentum. And we'll have to see how the GDP numbers pan out, because we know that we're, we're kind of through the tit-for-tat trade war thing with Canada. And then... The G7 thing, the one thing that did come out of it is um, we have uh, the Japanese yen, which uh, set us a buy signal yesterday. And I think that's because we have we now know we're going to have a trade deal with Japan and it's going to be favorable for the U.S. So then you think the, the, the yen will get weaker? Is that what you're saying? Um, I think I think in the short in the short run, we're going to see uh, there was a uh, uh, two days ago. We had a piercing line buy uh, candlestick uh, buy setup. And uh, yeah, it went right into that yeah, crash day, right? Of the right January. after it fell yeah. through from Friday, exactly. And the thing was, Friday it looked like all of a sudden that dollar weakness was really going to prevail against the uh, the yen. You know, and then we gapped open lower on Sunday, and then boom, we had this big turnaround. You know, on Monday. So I think that that kind of is putting a short-term bottom in for the uh, the yen. You know, I'm not trying to pick a bottom here, but I think in the short run, because of the trade deal, we're going to see a little bit of a rally in the uh, the pound or excuse me, the, the dollar yen trade. And the buy signal right now is conveniently arriving at this time. So I think that's where you're going to actually get a signal and maybe some sort of a trend over the next week and a half. Um, but the other markets, I think the U.S. dollar Canada pretty much is going to be sideways. The U.S. dollar Swiss, um, because of this new uh, Brexit information, uh, I think you're really going to start to see um, nothing happen in the currencies in Europe for the next uh, month except for the pound. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, just stay with this yen for a second. I mean, that, that's, this is a classic technical deal. I mean, you, you bring this back and that the yen had broken topside in November of 2016. Had some strength. That's when it got through this, you know, the 101, 102. And last three times down here, you know, right from, uh, what, 
January of 2018, this is where it has stopped, there's no doubt. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what do you think about the euro? It's going to be interesting, man, if that, the, the, you know, the, the euro is still hanging at these lows. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost, some days it almost looks like the euro is weaker than the uh, pound. <laughs> Sure, sure. Well, you know, it's funny, like, you look at how the pound has had its reaction today off the news. The euro's range today is slightly lower right now as we speak. Uh, it's not very big of a range, and even yesterday's range was really tight. So I, I think that uh, there, the, the euro has its issue for as far as fundamental numbers and stuff like that. They actually have their unemployment number coming out, which is really, really big for the EU. If that starts to show an uptick in unemployment, then we are really going to start to hear more trade, uh, more buzz about there becoming a slowdown and actually maybe a recession coming on into the EU, which is a big deal as we go into Brexit because we know it's going to be a hard Brexit now. So the EU, since they're not coming to the table, I think that it's going to be a sideways trade for the next, like, uh, basically going into October 31st. I mean, we've been in a sideways market in a three to three and a half dollar range now for four or five months. And for eight months, we've been in a six dollar range with all this news, with all the Brexit talks and even what's, what's going on now. It doesn't seem to shake it up. So I think that we're going to see a breakout after October 31st, which way I don't know yet. But until then, I think you got to it's. 113, 112 half is the cap, and it's pretty much going to probably be bobbing around 111 even handle, 110 handle for a while. Yeah. This guy, I mean, these currencies are moving around. There's no doubt about that, man. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's intriguing because it's not like the dollar index has really moved around a lot. I mean, it's between 94 right. and 98, right? You know? Right. It's like it gets above 97, 715, has no juice. Gets below it, has no juice. It's like, right. okay. Just kind of and that's what kind there. of worries me, Tommy, is that um, because the dollar index is starting to kind of plateau and that kind of a range, is the dollar going to turn or is this just a basing before we get through Brexit? That I don't know, I think, but uh, right now it, it might look that, um, and it would be good for the U.S. if we have a weakening dollar, uh, but I don't know if that's going to happen yet. We get, Probably earnings have to come out really strong in September to drive something like that. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's going to be, this hot Brexit's going to be, uh... <laughs> well, how about this guy? I mean, this is the one good thing we have is we have transparency now. With the Bank of Japan, we know how their stance is so that we know where we're standing with that currency. You know, U.S. dollar, Swiss, we know where we're at. And now with the, with the pound, I mean, this guy's not backing off. No. He's just not, no. There's no way that this guy, this guy is a force to be reckoned with. And I mean... I don't know much about the UK. I've never been to London, but you know, I've, the American impression of the English is they're very reserved and kind of quiet. This dude is not that. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, every trading day, you can, you can check out Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great week, safe week. Tommy and I look forward to speaking Thanks. to you next You guys week. have a nice holiday weekend. Enjoy yourselves and get some rest. Let's see you next week. You too, Teddy. Thanks, man. Stay right there. Tommy and I come right back, folks.